This week on SETV, we have an issue of storing and moving upright triple mowers. And Steve Bauman is the man for the job. Find out how he plans to resolve this issue using just metal. Oh yeah, and we'll also be getting donuts. But first, back to the office. So this is a very popular setup in our county and really across uh, America right now is the transition from wind rowers to a triple mower setup. You could, we used to be able to mow 16 foot swaths. Now we're mowing 30 with this kind of setup. Uh, and it's cool, everyone loves them, but the, it does present one problem at a dealership like ours. When you gotta move them, you kind of have to have a tractor like this. We can't always leave this tractor hooked up to these mowers might sell it for a different purpose. The problem is, if you look over here, we got a lot of these on our yard. And when you store them, if you store them on the ground, like folded out, they take up a lot of space. So the way we like to store them is up. So we tasked, we, we talked about this about a year ago when we actually put all these mowers up here, a better way to move them. And through discussions and whatnot, it's finally happening. Hello, I'm Steve from Colton's Equipment. Today we're building a triple mower adapter to carry them on a load all or a payloader. And that's all I got. <laughs> A while back, Dwayne came to me. Uh, he wanted an easier way to move triple mowers around in the yard uh, without having to hook it up to the tractor and three points. Uh, so he kind of brainstormed, came up with a little bit of a drawing, some plans on how to build it. Since then, plans have changed a lot, so we don't need these. So, this is what we got. We're about mid-project or so. What we're doing is basically building a frame structure to have a hook to carry the triple mowers on and we're going to have a platform along the bottom that the three point lower three point ears will come into and stay centered so that we don't get a rocking tipping motion out of it. Uh, what we have so far is pretty simple some square tube that's welded to some Q fits that we have uh, torched out CNC torched out locally. Um, I had to modify the mounts in order to fit both a load all and a payloader. They were designed first of all for a payloader. So in order to make them work on both, I had to add some material at the bottom so that we have bump stops for when it's on a load all and then cut a relief in the back for the framework of the carriage of the load all. Uh, from here, I had to build the hook like I mentioned and come up with a little bit of an idea. I got a couple things rolling around in my head and yeah, pretty soon we'll have a little bit more done and we'll be able to show you what's going on. So at Skolton's Equipment, there's some, uh, there's a little unique tradition we have. Uh, when it's your birthday, you get to go buy donuts for everyone. Uh, it was my birthday this past week and I was not at the store on that day. And so people have been reminding me, hey, where's the donuts? So I'm, uh, we're gonna go get some donuts for everyone for break time. 10 o'clock is always coffee time from 10 to 15. So we got about seven minutes before break time. I'm uh, kind of a procrastinator is what they call it. Um, but we live pretty close to the donut shop. We need three dozen donuts. Two, two dozen, sorry. How much is in a dozen? One, 
YouTube. We definitely need some fancy ones. Is that nerds? Do you have apple fritters? Oh yeah, all of them. I like apple fritters. He likes coconut. I think it tastes like an antique shop. But he'll eat coconuts all day. You don't have any red donuts for cougar fans. We don't support that. No. Oh, nerds on a donut. Some people do. What's this one? I don't think I want that one. Oh yeah, two of those. I didn't know you could put a coconut into a donut. Seahawks are playing today. They're gonna beat up on the Packers again. Maxed out the card with two dozen. We need three dozen donuts. All right. Thank you. Yeah, you guys have a good day. So we only got two dozen, which I think will be fine. We need three dozen donuts. Ooh. Donuts! Do you want some donuts? You're on camera. Now here's an update on what we're doing with the triple mower adapter. We got kind of an idea going as far as the hook. Uh, this is gonna be the main lifting point. That's all we're gonna be using to actually lift the whole entire three-point assembly or the triple mower assembly. So after test running it a bunch on all the different uh, brand models we have out there, uh, came up with a hook, which we'll end up reinforcing a lot later. Uh, started with a template. Uh, these both both of these tubes were up a lot higher on here um, and with this bump pad which is where the lower three points uh, will set against basically the the whole thing was too low to the point where we wouldn't be able to put the triple mowers on the ground the whole idea is to get them as low as possible for where we're going to be storing them um, so I had to shrink it kind of down a little bit, adjust the tubes, cut these plates down. Uh, yeah, we're gonna get tacked up here pretty soon and start working on strengthening this upper tube and this hook. All right, so we'll come out here to test run the adapter for these triple mowers uh, for fully welding up the hook side of it. I uh, just wanted to show you kind of like all the differences in the, in the brands of triple mowers. What is this even? This is a Pottinger, I think. Oh yeah, Nova Cap. This one's really unique on the bottom. Uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how that works uh, with what we got going on, but it'll be fine, I think. So I'll show you a John Deere one also right here. This one had a climate kind of clearance issue with one of my first hook setups, so I had to lengthen that to accommodate those brackets, the brackets here and whatnot. And this one's actually got two different spots for different cat size pins. Um, so it was kind of difficult, trial and error, a few times to get the pieces of angle iron spaced evenly to the point where those enter those angle iron correctly. Again, different, another different dimension from top to bottom. This is the Kloss one. This is the ones we sell, of course, we carry as a brand. So there will be the ones that we move around the most. Different dimension again, top to bottom. And then different shape because they use these for the quick coupler lower links on the tractors. Um, and what we're trying to do with this one, part of the reason I had to change those square tubes that I talked about were, was because we're planning on lowering it all the way to the ground. So this is how the manufacturer sets up the feet for them to sit well it's the storage area we're going to have them we'd like them to be even lower it's a little safer for stability um, so we're going to raise those feet up and have to make sure there's clearance so that the bottom of that plate doesn't go past any part of the framework on here and you can get out and unhook from it uh, this is our so this is one with mergers on it and this is the one as far as weight that we're dealing with here you're relying on that top hook uh, to carry 8,000 pounds approximately is what this weighs. So it's a pretty significant amount of weight hanging on the front end. Uh, yeah, so now we're just gonna do that test fit. We're gonna do it on a different different machine than this, but a lot of the cloth ones are the same dimension. So and we'll weld her up hot. All right, we didn't rip any tacks apart or anything, so that's nice. Um, yeah, just checking clearances on the hook and everything, that all these gussets are not gonna interfere with anything. Uh, these bottom plates are gonna contact the ears of the three-point well. And looking at our uh, clearances, like I was mentioning earlier, the frame will be the lowest point. 
or actually these feet here, see this mark, they go into the tube only so far. These feet will be about here. We still have plenty of clearance from that to here to get the hook and the plate and the adapter away from uh, the mower. So I'm gonna go uh, back in the shop and uh, burn those welds in. So at Skull's Equipment, we have a large lot. We have a lot of space, we have a lot of parts on the ground, waiting for that what if day, if it might happen, where we might need something that's in this row of stuff. A lot of people ask, why do you keep it? Well, for the what if day. We're here today on Backlot Archaeology. I'm gonna pick one of these items and actually tell you what it's for. Come on. There's a lot of you that watch this channel that might like John Deere. And we do have some relics from the John Deere era of Skolton's equipment. And one of them that I drive by quite often here is this big old thing that looks kind of like a tractor. Oh my goodness. Ugh. It's not a tractor and it probably has really good stuff inside of it. I can hear it jiggling. Maybe, oh, there we go. What this is is a, uh, it's a, I believe, someone might correct me on this, I believe it's an extra diesel tank for a John Deere tractor. Um, it mounts on the front and also acts like kind of as another counterweight. And so they made it look kind of like the front of the tractor. Here, come and look at this. Ugh. I bet you if I turn this valve, maybe not. Oh, there we go. Oh yeah. That's like off, that's off the still, man. Oh, we better not pollute that on the ground. I don't know what that is. It's nuclear waste. Oh. <laughs> it's for sale. You might want to get the inside clean be first though. Let's keep looking. Oh, right here. This is this should actually be someone's next project. This right here, if I believe. Oh my goodness. Oh. Getting ready for snowmobile season lifting all this old metal. This is an old roll bar off a John Deere compact tractor, I believe. May even be off a 29 series, 2000 series deer, like the 2850s, 29, 2840s. Kind of looks like that style roll bar, bolts to the frame. For some reason, we took it off at one point and uh, someone didn't want the, probably the, the height restriction that this would cause on some tractors to get in low barns. So um, they took it off or we took it off and it's sitting here on a pallet waiting for you to take it home. What we have here is beauty. <laughs> so here we have the finished product of our triple mower adapter and you can see it's all painted up. Uh, so what we did is added a few brackets on the bottom, uh, gussets, and then finished welding everything up solid. Um, we had uh, the boss run it over the weekend. He moved about eight rear triple mowers and didn't have any issues. One thing he wanted to change a little bit was shaving this hook down to make it a little easier getting into one of the brands uh, top links and after doing that we're happy with it so we had our detail guy Nick paint it up cloth colors looks really sharp so we're gonna go out and uh, show you guys how it works so these are how the Q fit uh, attachments work on the wheel loader JCB wheel loader uh, this will also work on a uh, on a load all style carriage which is pretty much the same idea got the top hooks at the on there. We'll go grab a kind of middle of the road size cloths uh, rear triple mower. And the a hook on here kind of a white. Try to get a brighter color to make it a little easier to, to see visibility wise but See you there. 
It's pretty, pretty quick and easy to hook up. Back it out. So like we kind of showed you before, we ended up welding it all solid. Um, got the top hook is really what is lifting uh, the whole assembly. And uh, all the bottom is doing is just being a stop pad. The ears resting on the anger iron or what, what keep it stable, keep it from being tippy. Uh, got a lot of weight up high on these, so potential for it to just want to pivot on that top hook is, uh, was a concern. So that takes care of that quite, pretty well. I haven't, haven't had any issues with the bottom. Yeah, appreciate you checking out what we're up to. See ya. At Skolton's Equipment, no one day is the same from another one. We have a lot of different moving parts at Skolton's Equipment. We have a rental department, service department, parts department, sales department, and we do trucking. And we hope to give you a good glimpse of that in this episode of what we do from a day-to-day -day basis and what new, new challenges arise and we try to tackle them. And we hope to keep giving you this content and keep providing you with an entertaining experience into a tractor dealership. And we remember, we have a website, and everything you see on this lot has a picture and a price, and it's online at sculptonsequipment.com. We'll see you again. Tune in.